it's nothing new But it's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the Hi guys. Today we're going to be doing a seascape and it's, I'm just working straight from the computer screen. It's a photograph that I took a while ago. It's a grey moody day. I'll put it in the top corner of the screen so you can see it. And uh, I've just wet the paper and my, my paints are still a bit dry so I'll run some water through those and, um, and I'll get started. It's mainly going to be blues and um, monotone uh, greys I think this one. And look at this, I'm just going straight into all these blues. Nothing precious about this at all. I'm just going to put this right across the top. Down to, it's actually going to get darker. I want it to get darker to the centre there. And lighter there and darker to the front. Oh, dab into the browns a little bit and dab back into the blues. Put some interesting darks there. A bit more at the side, a bit more at the back. Now, the main thing I'm going to be needing now is more water and a rag because. I'm going to start lifting out this sky pattern to start with. I'm using this watercolour brush which I've listed below. Actually, I don't know if that's going to be good enough. As you can tell, these paintings are not ever rehearsed. <laughs> if it doesn't work, sometimes they don't work, by the way, <laughs> and I just don't show you. You don't get to see it. So if you're seeing this, that means it, it worked in the end. So stick with me. Worth a thought. Mm. I think I'll try this. You have to lift out those clouds any old way you can. So if you've got tissues, that's fine. This rag's working quite well. I'll just take that right up there. I'm just basically pushing the top half and letting the top, the bottom half be as it is. Now, I want to dry up. Actually, might be better off using a brush for this. I want to do a straight line across where the sea is over there in the distance. Another one. Some foam in the foreground here. And then patches over here. So that's how I'm getting my white. I'm doing wet on wet and then I'm picking out. So I'm hoping, just notice that goes right across over there. I'm hoping that I won't have to use gouache on this watercolour painting at all. I'm hoping I can get it just perfect without it. Another white line there. Okay, go back around here. While it's drying, I'm just constantly playing, removing this paint. In a minute, I'll be attacking it with a hairdryer. Just firstly, excuse the blowfly. This is Australia. We live with blowflies, especially I do because I've got, I've got chooks and uh, various reasons for living near the bush. The city is pretty clear, but out here where we have them. But I usually find they want to get out just as fast as they got in. I might just, yeah, I'll, I'll just put in a hint of a... very 
I'm pressing really hard there now. You can see by the way the brush bends. Just getting a little wave in there. Okay, I'll stop that at that point and uh, I might just, as soon as I say things like that, I don't just white out some square points over here, some hard lines, I mean, rectangles, geometric shapes, just to give the hint of the rock and what's happening there. Okay, that's worthy of, a, of drying off with a hairdryer at this stage. But from a distance I can see a slight problem. My enthusiastic... Yeah, that's enough. If you rub it too much, you will start to peel the paper and little lumps of paper will start to peel off. So you've got to be careful not to overdo that rubbing bag. to stay every single day yeah. right. now just going to show you something else I'm going to dunk this in the water again a second time and I'll see if I can see it down in here I'll show you what it does hopefully nothing <laughs> because I dried that off completely it is now permanently stained into that paper and not much will get it out. So I can wet it again and it won't run. Let's put that back where it was. Very, very wet as you can see again. And I'm going to do another layer of blue. Oops. This time I won't go to the blacky side, I'll just try and get some purple into this. These are rough old hake brushes, very rough. But this type of work, moon glow might be good. Mm. Okay. So, once again, across the top. Let it roll down, Get stronger still, down here. Moon glow in the purple. Right. Hmm. Might go for a touch of green and blues into the foreground. Just because I'm a bit of a sook for colours. Now, because it's wet on wet, it's all flowing in together. I'm going to continue doing similar to what I did before. I'm going to lift out some of the clouds I'd lifted out before. I can see them through the colour. Keep finding a, try and find a nice clean part of your rag to play with. More of those. So I'm just going to lift out this water. I wonder how I'd go lifting out some more along there. I'm beginning to lose the, the texture of the paper is my worry now that I'm going to be having trouble with it. Just do a couple of lines across like that. I'm not scrubbing out, I'm lifting out. I do like the reverse painting process. Putting paint down and then bringing it away, like um, playing with it. I will put some strengthening into some of the colour here. I'll do it while it's still wet. I'll make it a bit stronger. I'll put some patterns into the water here. Very dark green. Really not a bright colour at all. So 
Now for another dry off. And just before I do, I'll clean brush really well. And put a couple of real, uh, very, oh. This brush has a mind of its own sometimes. Just put a couple of lines over here into the clouds. Of course we've got the horizon line. Could put that in as a separate line to the fat one to this area below. Mm, kind of happy with this I think. Yeah. As it dries you'll find that every time you touch it there's something different. There's a different level of lifting you can do. Lifting meaning removing, removing the colour that's there. As it dries it refuses to budge but while it's still wet you can play a touch with it. I'll see how I go with another little line going across. It might help. don't really know what to do at the front here. I'll, I'll attack that later. So I'll show you what I've got so far. That's the next stage. That's what I call stage two. Okay, I'm going to attack it with the hairdryer, so I'll let you guys uh, have a break from that. Okay, I'll put the rough brushes away for a while and I'll get back to my traditional watercolour and my new found friend, which is the size 24 Italian um, brush, which I shall list below in B&B. Uh, &B. Okay, so I'll take some burnt umber ultramarine blue. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. Yep. Ultramarine blue and burnt umber is my choice of very, very dark. Um, now, I'll just test it. I'll test the water, so to speak. Putting a couple of runs in there just, just to see how that's going to work. Okay, I'm going to go up into the sky a little bit. It's this paper now I'd call semi dry. It's not exactly dry. And it's not exactly um, either. Some weird colours here. Okay. So this is a nice this island here. I can just play around with and do some interesting um, shapes at the base of it and uh, as if there's rocks coming out there. On this side, I have to decide which one of these is going to be the um, horizon. I think it's right down here. There's some rocks in here. And then getting thicker and thicker as it gets out to the edge. And then I'll come back in. And this is where the combination of the brown and the blue really work well because as you press your brush you're getting slightly slight variations of each the warm to the cold. And then I'll put some bigger rocks in. I'll make a few up. Once again, you have to be careful not to do them too evenly. Make some overlap, some bigger, some smaller ones. Use what you see in the photograph for inspiration, but you can break the, break the rules and put your own ones in if you want to. One's got a shadow under it, and while I've got that colour mixed, I'll just have a go at putting that shadow in. Got to be strong there. Wet the brush. 
and then weaken it out. These all have shadows because they're all in the water. Much less shadow at the back there. end up looking all right I hope. That one there's on the sand so it won't have much of a shadow. I'll just weaken those shadows out so that they don't look like the rocks above them. In fact follow the principle of uh, zigzagging them a little bit. Sand on this side I could put in right now just to give me a feel for it. I'll make it a little bit browner and just rub that around in that direction. Can't see I'm going to be able to not put white gouache on this in the end. I think I'm going to need it. Now, I need to clean out one of these. I don't, I don't think I need that green colour anymore. Hmm, famous last words, I do need it. What colour don't I need? Okay, I'll make use of this one by adding more ultramarine blue. And I'm going to st just strip in a few colours in the distance here to give that watery feel horizontal lines then I'll add some of this green into that blue make it blend wet together wet, wet the brush and then put the wet brush underneath the lines I can run them across take them up a little bit of a Z pattern happening you could sort of zigzag a touch very gently. While I'm looking at the photograph there is a big wave coming over there so I'm going to make use of the white colour that I've put in. Smooth off the bottom of the wave. This side's a little bit different. I might do another one there. And of course we've got rocks out here, everywhere here. So that means I need to have a, to do rocks you need a sharp edge. You can't do it while it's wet. So that means you have to dry it again with the hairdryer. Just noticed I've got some splashes from there before when I dried it. So I might have to be creative with that cliff edge and maybe put some um, trees on it or something. It's just kind of or a bit weird but... Uh, in the distance there is a, um, another island which sort of defines the horizon a little bit. A little bit of the black and the blue together. I'll just touch that in over there. Make it run behind that one. Now, to do the rocks again, I'll go for the burnt umber, ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue making it cooler and cooler and sharp edge shapes following the, I'm following the photograph fairly closely here another big rock just there and um, there's some rocks around the front here too. Okay. I am sometimes a slave for what's there because it sometimes makes the painting interesting, even though sometimes you can't tell. Uh, you, you know, can, can confuse the eye. But if you if you if you're true to form of what's what you're looking at, um, you, 
have a bit of chance anyway, I think, of uh, getting it right. Oh, I might just wash this brush again. Excuse the noises outside. The packing of the van is happening. Okay, just doing some interesting, just uh, teal blue type of um, colours, which although they're not in the photograph that you will see, I'm adding them in. I'm sure if I was there in person, the light would be changing. <laughs> Running that across there. Might make it the back. Okay, now these rocks need firming up, so that means I've got to go really dark with this blue and black. They've, they've dried off a little bit, so I want to make them almost black. We'll bring that around. So I'm going black, brown, blue. I'm going to just blow my picture up a bit so I can see what's happening there. All right, so a few little dots and lines around. In fact, there's, there's a ton of detail, but I'll be simplifying it down to the basics. And uh, these, these rocks will need some kind of lightning on the top. So therefore, this now that I'm doing it, I, I can see I probably need to um, have left that white. But because I don't um, use the uh, resist, the paint. I'm just using the top of this brush now. I don't know if you can see that. You can see there a little bit more. This is the fun part where with rocks you start to define the other edge of the rock and just scribble around a little bit like that and you can end up with a lovely looking shapes. Okay, so more in the sand there. It is a very dull sand. Sometimes little spots help also with sand. Especially a little sort of necklace of Plotsam and Jetsam that comes up. So this one has got a top on it, but oops, probably a bit too dark there. I'll just take that off. I'll get the brush to behave. Looks like a fish. <laughs> oops. Gonna go for a smaller, this lovely new rigger. If I really want thin lines, this is how I make thin lines. And the top of the rock needs a thin line. And I can come in later and make it darker. Sometimes the cracks over the rocks also. And here I'll just put a few. I've got dots there, but I'll just add these lines like that. It's going a little bit abstracty, randomy. But, hmm. but still got an issue. I've, I haven't quite um, got that wave in the right angle that I would have liked it in. So I'm just sort of messing around a little bit here. I think I have to go to the white now to define the um, white um, foam, but it won't mean. Uh, it, it won't necessarily mean I'm finished but usually it does because I can't once you've got white down it's not easy then to um, come over it you will spread it so you've got to choose areas where you're going to put white that's that's almost the end of the painting unless of course you decide to go with gouache and then you can start painting back in over the white so here I'm going to be just adding the um, foam that's down in that area often good when you're adding white or a color go 
find the closest colour to it. I'm picking the lightest area I can to start with this white and putting it quite thick so it's almost white on white and that has subtlety about it rather than going straight into the dark areas and trying to make that work. So I tend to just scribble backwards and forwards with the white and let it run out of the brush. I don't keep charging the brush up, I let that finish off. Oops. I don't know if in this video I said at the beginning I wasn't going to use gouache, but that was a lie. Okay, so on this side it's much foamier, much stronger, so I can have a bit more fun. And as you can see from the photograph, I haven't really been true to uh, reality, but I've got the idea in there of what I wanted. So I'm putting it in fairly thickly in spots. I'm going to turn it a little bit like that. Excuse my messy board. It's one of those things I haven't got round to replacing. Now, just doing the scribble of the foam. I might end up having to put it in. I don't really like, I like to, I prefer to use it out of the tube, as I've said before. But in this case, when I need it as a, as a positive painting rather than just retouch, I need more control. Okay. It's just, I, mainly S's I tend to do. S's or Z's. Half circles. Keep it flat. Don't go circles in a round circle. You have to have a sort of flattened off perspective to these little eddies of, of foam in that. So basically the water's coming into that bottom uh, layer above below the rocks there. And that can be played with a little bit to make it look more realistic. Cut the top off the rock so to speak. And then a few spots above on the rocks where the older water has still stayed and is reflected. The front here, it's basically just reflecting the sky. It's dark, but kind of a dark grey, but I've got it as a blue, so there you go. That's how changed it is. I'll come back down. So these reference photos are just the beginning of your painting. They're not necessarily uh, what you're going to end up with. Treat them, don't treat them as gospel. Don't treat any photo as gospel. If you wanted it to be photographic, you'll just hang the photo on, get a print made, put the photo up. You need to interpret it in your own style, with your own hand. So I'm going, travelling over to here. I might, with that, I might just put a bit of a hint of falling wave there. Out in the distance, there is rough water there, a little bit along the bottom of the mountain. I might just drag dry brush across. On the other side of here, there's the horizon, so I'll just dry brush the horizon in. If I was, um, you could put some birds in if you wanted to do little sort of McDonald's signs and things like that in the sky, that works. Don't know that I'll do that. It's just not my style, but it does work. It's a traditional technique. Okay, little dots here and there, just to show that there's water floating around and right on the very edge I'll just trace a tiny bit of white paint there like that. Now, 
I'm beginning to think I might just finish off with some, I'll go back to the straight watercolour and I'll just warm up the tops of some of these rocks. And I'm guessing that if I overdo it, it might work. I want to go for a sort of a yellowy brown. I'll do it a very I'll do a thin line to start with just over the, some of these rocks just to see how they look. How it looks. Not too bad. So it's just a hint of color. Sometimes it can be the um, seaweed that turns golden colored like that. Not necessarily in this photo though. Um, down here I've got the blue of that mountain there. I don't know whether I should bother clean, uh, filling that in. So I'm kind of happy with this. I think it's good. I think it works. I could just exaggerate the shadows, the reflections in the water. That's one little um, a trick that works. So wherever you've got reflections, just run down horizontal lines like that. That gives that vertical and then over this side, same again, a bit of blue on the brush, just giving that vertical shadow stronger in amongst where the rock is and then all dark and right on the edge down here. Now that's a very simple seaside sketch.